on Newsmax Prime. We will also finally take care of our great veterans. Our veterans are incredible people. And they face incredible challenges, as does our next commander-in-chief. On this Veterans Day, how will Trump transform the VA? And depression-era teenagers transformed into our greatest generation following an act of infamy. 75 years after Pearl Harbor, a new look at how Japan pulled its deadly surprise attack. Plus, surprise is also a tool of spies. But the biggest surprises for a quartet of American agents came not undercover in World War II, but instead in the top spot at the CIA. Those stories and more on this Veterans Day edition of Newsmax Prime, starting right now. Good evening and welcome to the Friday night edition of Newsmax Prime. I'm J.D. Hayworth. Of prime interest tonight, we observe the 11th day of the 11th month, which comes in the 11th hour of the Obama administration. The way I see it, this Veterans Day is not only a call to commemoration, it is a reason for celebration. Celebration that a commander-in-chief so out of touch with those who have fought and fight our battles soon faces discharge from his duties. For most Americans, January 20th cannot come soon enough. On that day, Donald Trump will take the oath of office as our 45th president. And to keep true to that oath, he will have to keep his promise to our veterans. After the much ballyhooed but slipshod reforms of recent years, the VA needs real change. In fact, President Obama and Bernie Sanders made sure that their so-called reforms actually protected unionized bureaucrats who still care about their own benefits more than those promised to our veterans. Those who have borne the weight of battle should not have to battle here at home for their benefits and the health care that they have been promised. And that's the way I see it. Of course, Veterans Day is a federal holiday, but the president-elect is hard at work determining just who will help him lead in the next administration. Miranda Khan has more now on the Trump transition. Thanks, J.D. Right now, everyone is looking forward to the transition from the Obama administration to president-elect Donald Trump. Today, big news. Vice President-elect Mike Pence will take the reins of Trump's new transition team from New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. The New York Times reports Trump told advisors that he wanted to tap Pence's Washington experience and contacts to help move the process forward. Also being discussed, some are saying Republican National Committee Chairman Reince Priebus could be Trump's chief of staff, but Priebus himself refused to clarify any of those rumors during an interview this morning. Are you going to be the next White House chief of staff? I, I, honestly, Ed, I, 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 I'm telling you, I don't, I, I, number one, that's not my job. Number two, I don't have any updates for you on transition. <laughs> so, Freebus says no updates yet, but he didn't seem to rule out the possibility of being chief of staff. Now, yesterday, Donald Trump met with President Obama for over an hour to talk about the peaceful transition between their two administrations, a goal for both of them. Mr. Obama says that he's committed to making it go as smoothly as possible. My number one priority in the coming two months is to try to facilitate a transition that ensures our president-elect is successful. Now, for more on what lies ahead, we are very pleased to be joined by our panel. Joining us via Skype, Missy Shorey. She is the executive director of Maggie's List. And from Washington, D.C., it's David Goodfriend. David is the former deputy staff secretary to President Bill Clinton. And today he runs Goodfriend Government Affairs. And finally, from Newsmax, Washington, we have with us former Illinois Congressman Michael Patrick Flanagan. Today, Michael runs Flanagan Consulting. Before we begin, because this is a special Veterans Day edition, I want to take a moment now and thank you, Congressman Flanagan, for your service. I know you served as captain and in the Army, so we thank you. You're welcome. All right, let's talk more about the transition of power between the two presidential administrations. Last night on Newsmax Prime, we talked to President Ronald Reagan's son, Michael Reagan, about the transition of power from President Jimmy Carter to his father, 
and 1980. It was a smooth transition between my father and President Carter. It wasn't such a smooth transition between Mrs. Carter, because I think even today she thinks my father cheated, and that's why Jimmy Carter didn't get a second term as President of the United States. But it was very smooth. David Goodfriend, I want to ask you, do you anticipate the transition of power between President Obama and Mr. Trump to be as smooth as both have suggested? I really do. Um, I think that, that we, what we've seen over the last 48 hours is pretty remarkable. That meeting between President Obama and President-elect Trump could have lasted five minutes or maybe 15 minutes. Instead, it lasted 90 minutes. And that suggests to me and a lot of other observers that there was real substantive uh, issues being discussed there and a sincere effort on behalf of uh, both men uh, to, to do a smooth transition. I think um, it's sort of in the DNA of uh, President Obama and other Democrats to want this to function. Um, and I think he will want it to function well. Uh, he doesn't want his uh, watch uh, to be known for uh, vindictiveness or, or messing up uh, the, the way the country runs. So I think it's going to go yeah. well. I think it's going to go smoothly. And I think that um, I'm actually hopeful that Donald Trump, given some of the things that he said on the campaign trail, may surprise a lot of us with uh, who he puts in his cabinet and who he puts in his administration. Yeah. He, has, he has a lot of supporters, David, I... actually. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. I just want to say I think you're right. I, I, it's, I, we, I don't think you're going to find that between you and I very often, but I think you're, <laughs> I think you're right. I think, I, I think the president really wants, to, wants it to go well, and I think Mr. Trump wants it to go very well, too. And uh, the president-elect has a lot of uh, levers on him right now that are, that are very difficult for him, uh, and not least of which is that he has to kind of drain the swamp, so to speak, which is to get rid of the Washingtonians, who are Republicans and Democrats alike, uh, and at the same time fix a lot of the problems. I know President Obama has worked hard uh, trying to fix the VA, but he's handcuffed by a lot of things that he's promised Democrats over the years, unionized labor, things like that, and can't do the firings necessarily that needs to be done. You know, only Nixon could go to China. In, in some ways, only a Republican can really go after the bureaucracy successfully. And I think, uh, I think Mr. Trump is committed to that, and I think it'll happen. Missy, you were well, wanting to comment? Go ahead. There's another element here, too, which is you really see President-elect Trump taking a page out of business, meaning good to great. For example, Jim Collins always explained you need to do the first thing is get the right people on the bus, <clears> and <throat> then the next step is you need to put them in the right seats. I think that he's figured out who's on his team. The issue is just where it's going to be. And as far as that transition, I applaud President Obama. I think he's done a wonderful job of setting the tone and saying, let the man get to work, because he wants to indeed have the pillar of democracy of a transfer of peaceful power happen here, no matter what may be going on, say, down the street in Washington, D.C., in the Rose Garden and in the White House, it will go smoothly. I will tell you as a person who had the opportunity to witness things change from the uh, Clinton administration over to the Bush administration, even though it was a hard-fought campaign. And yes, there was a little bit of challenge there, but it did happen. And then as a result from that, President Bush made a point of making sure things went as smoothly as possible with President Obama. These are all people who view the world very differently from a policy standpoint, but their commitment to democracy stands strong. And I believe that's a testament to both of their leadership. David, you kind of alluded to this earlier. You heard me mention that President-elect Donald Trump demoted New Jersey Governor Chris Christie as head of his transition team, replacing him instead with Vice President-elect Mike Pence. Now, according to our parent website, Newsmax.com, Christie will now be vice chairman of the transition team. David, are you surprised, and was this a good move on Trump's part? I think it was a very good move, and I think it showed, uh, frankly, some managerial decisiveness. Chris Christie comes in with baggage. Uh, the recent convictions of his senior staffers over the Bridgegate issue uh, threatened to put a cloud over the entire transition process, and I think uh, President-elect Trump acted decisively by putting uh, his vice president in charge. And, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Pence has been governor of a state. Um, he's no stranger to uh, management in government, and he's no stranger to Washington. But interestingly enough, if you look at uh, Governor Pence and at the uh, recent appointees to the Trump transition, there are plenty of seasoned professionals from government. In other words, people who've served in the George W. Bush White House or in other cabinet agencies. Uh, uh, governor Pence himself has been a member of Congress and a governor. 
So um, on the one hand, you could say, well, that's not exactly draining the swamp. I happen to believe that it's reassuring to know that people who are familiar with the levers of power in Washington are going to be in positions of power in the Trump transition, because uh, frankly, you do want some experience. Now, my hope is that we'll also see some surprising new faces uh, around that cabinet table, people perhaps from another political party, people perhaps, perhaps with other backgrounds. That, too, would be in keeping with uh, Donald Trump's uh, pattern of uh, doing the unexpected, and I hope that happens. House Speaker Paul Ryan is excited about the transition, and he says he can't wait to start working with a new president. Take a listen. We had a great working lunch. Uh, the, the president-elect, uh, the first lady, uh, incoming first lady, and the vice president-elect. Great working lunch. Look, I can tell you what I got out of Donald Trump today is this is a man of action. He is ready to get it working. He wants to get it done for the country. Uh, it's, it's really, really exciting. Congressman Flanagan, Ryan hasn't exactly been a cheerleader for Trump throughout this election. Do you expect him to change his tune now that Trump has been elected? And how imperative is that for the Republican Party? You have about 30 seconds to respond, sir. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about, about, about Paul, God bless him. I, I don't know where he's going to come out on this. Uh, he's, he's proven to be a, a brilliant uh, uh, worker in the, uh, in the uh, uh, Congress. But as for his political instincts, they, they, they are something lacking. Uh, when he went out and spoke just before uh, Mrs. Clinton spoke uh, the day after the election, he talked about his agenda with the House, not the president, the president-elect's agenda. So I don't know how that's going to work out, but I pray that they'll be able to work together successfully on behalf of the American people. Congressman David Goodfriend, Missy Shorey, thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Newsmax TV wants to hear from you. That's what this show is all about. Now, in addition to taking your calls during our live shows, we're also offering you the opportunity to record a video to send to us. And we're happy to share one of those viewer videos right now. Here's Peter from Lansing, Michigan. Um, I'm from Lansing, Michigan, and I'm so thankful that Michigan finally voted for the right one. And I really appreciate Newsmax TV, and you guys keep up the great work. Stay blessed, and I know you're going to stay blessed because you guys... Give the news and the truth. Bye-bye. And Peter, we appreciate you. Thanks so much for taking that time to send that video. Now, if you want to send in a video, just like Peter did, and let your voice be heard, all you have to do is go to NewsmaxTV.com slash video comments. We'd love to hear from you. Those comments can include honoring our veterans. After all, that's what today is all about, and that's why J.D. will continue our Newsmax Prime Special Veterans Edition with an author who wrote a book on the days leading up to Pearl Harbor. Newsmax Prime continues.